Welcome. Welcome in. What is up? Welcome to the series finale. I am RC, your host, joined by Jeff, my co-host. Jeff, how you doing, bud? I'm doing good. How are you? Great, man. Great, great. You've taken some big steps forward in the last week. First things first, I recommend watching this one on YouTube. So if you can, I know we have some pod feeds up, um, but if you can, watch it on YouTube. Um, it, it's the finale, so you probably want to see our beautiful faces um, at, at any time, really. But um, I recommend, you know, we, we have some increased production uh, elements, we'll say, uh, for this for this show. Um, also, we are on every major social media outlet now. Um, it's at FC Wine Mixer for Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So like, follow, all that business. Um, there's a separate YouTube channel now. Um, it's just FC Wine Mixer. Um, this one will not be on there. Uh, maybe I'll upload it to both, but, um, but moving forward, um, last thing we said the show is going to be called the gauntlet. It is going to be called the mixer and the gauntlet is going to be like a featured thing. So, um, I think that covers all that. Jeff today, yeah. today we are talking about simulation theory how stoked are you man i'm excited i'm excited for any of this these kind of topics so yeah uh, yeah this will be fun it, it seems appropriate it's been such a big element of our show um and uh just just chatter over the years so so yeah i am i am pumped i think i got all the housekeeping out of the way um, we're looking for advertisers. Obviously, nobody's interested at this point, but you know, maybe maybe we'll have ads, uh, uh, which I'm sure you guys will love. Um, but you know, uh, I'm excited. But but yeah, um, you know, like, subscribe, follow, all that. Um, you know, we're on iTunes and Spotify. I didn't mention that. Um, I mean, I, I mentioned in the chat, but but subscribe, uh, rate and review. You know, all that bullshit. Um, anything you could do, be help, be helpful. Um, you know, once we, once we get the real thing going, I'll, I'll let you guys know when we can start sharing, um, uh, sharing the show more. So simulation theory, let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to apologize right out the start to Jeff. Um, some of it's going to be a monologue. So my man's going to, going to be quiet for a little bit, but Trust me, That's there's going to be plenty of time for back and forth. Um, we just want to explain what it is. So what is simulation theory? Um, the simplest explanation uh, is that our reality, Earth, the universe, um, is an artificial simulation, a video game. Basically, we're living in a video game. Here's my understanding. Um, and the first time it, it kind of blew my mind, was actually listening to another podcast. Um, I don't listen to him anymore, but uh, it's these two guys in Philly, and um, I think they're called what are they called? The Football Guys. I think they're just called the Football Guys. Um, no, 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 because that's that's um, that's Sigmund Bloom, and uh, I think they're the Football Guys. I can't remember what the what their name is. Anyway, um, let's get into it ready to dive deep, put on your tinfoil hats. Here we go. Um, so computing power continues to increase exponentially, and we're already dabbling in artificial intelligence. So the possibility exists that our minds uh, basically upjump lice and berry pickers somehow, that somehow gain the ability to, to throw rocks. Uh, look it up, the importance of the throwing arm if you have it. Um, our minds are capable of creating an environment that is indistinguishable from reality. So this is an important part of, of stimulation theory. Basically, that we can create an environment that is indistinguishable from our own. However, we can do that 
we can at least conceive of that possibility, mainly because of video games and the fact that computing power just continues to increase like crazy. Um, so, I mean, have, have you seen the PS5 design? Tell me that's not insane. Uh, whatever the fuck the Xbox is called. Um, <laughs> I assume it's not called the Xbox 2 because why the fuck would it be? They went from Xbox to Xbox 360. Uh, so is this one, I mean, Jeff, maybe you know, is it called the Xbox Precambrian? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, okay. I mean, that that timeline's more confusing than, than an episode of Westworld. I don't, I do not understand. It's okay. uh official name as of right now is the Xbox Series X, I believe. Right, right. I mean, that's yeah. that's how the timeline goes. It goes... You know, it goes, it goes, Xbox, uh, the 360, one, and then Series X. So, so yeah, I mean, Elon must be, Elon must must be writing their like their timeline layout or something because it's it's just all over the place. All right, so for simplicity's sake, let's just accept that fact for now that we can create an environment that is indistinguishable from our own. Uh, that Cliffy B in whatever mechanized Frankenstein monster he becomes will one day be able to develop a gear simulation either with physical components or um, hardwiring into our brain um, like they do in the Matrix. So once you're plugged in, that machine runs the show. Uh, this program is God to you, basically. It controls the environment you live in, you may be able to move freely around, um, but the program can evolve the surroundings around you. There will be static objects like structures and such, but the program controls all things in motion around you. Other people, the weather, diseases, your shitty football team, sleazy salespersons, the outcome of Game of Thrones, the discontinuation of Pepsi Blue, it controls everything. Perhaps there are others plugged in the simulation uh, environment you are wandering, Perhaps you are the only one living in your own simulation. Uh, the important element here is that you are not existing in an organic environment. It is, in fact, virtual. So, if you accept that this possibility exists, that computing power, that we, we are capable of creating this environment somehow, um, whether it's like plugging into your, to the neurons in your brain, or if it's sitting in a vat somewhere with, you know, compression vests or something that makes you feel the real, real sensations, um, then it becomes very likely, just by a sheer numbers standpoint, that we are, in fact, in some form of a sim simulation. The thinking is, um, from what we already know about creating much smaller scale and rudimentary simulations like video games, uh, we can draw certain conclusions. So the hypothetical computing power required to develop this virtual sandbox. So basically if we have the technological capabilities to create this virtual world, um, it then becomes very easy to add additional users, right? So everybody can, can plug in however it's done if it's just bots you know you can if you have the computing power to make something as um complex as like a virtual world adding basically an infinite number of bots should be simple based on what we know from from our experience with programming computer design and everything so if you have this immu immense um, computing capability, um, an infinite number of users can be walking around this virtual world. So if you accept that possibility, um, the probability of you being one of those virtual users um, <coughs> become, becomes very high. Basically, um, 
I'm lost in my notes here. If you can't tell, <laughs> <laughs> you're good. No, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's basically it. If you have like an infinite number of virtual users um, and a finite number of actual people, like we know, I mean, however it's created, then it's just a, a numbers game. If you have an infinite number of bots, the likelihood that you are an actual like biological being is just is just low it's very low so basically you know <laughs> yeah I, I mean i can't explain it another way really if you have a, a certain hard set of numbers of, of real people and you can have an infinite 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 number of bots essentially you know likely you're a bot because there's only right. like you know how, however many like right now for instance we have 8 billion 10 billion people alive on the planet i don't know what the exact numbers are a lot less than in uh, december because of the coronavirus but um but that's a hard set number and then you have an infinite number of bots even though 8 billion is you know a lot if um if you put that over infinity that's it's kind of you know it's right. very 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 small likelihood oh yeah shouts to uh, happy belated father's day to all the dads out there i forgot to get that at the top so thoughts jeff initial thoughts on on all of that um like there's parts of simulation theory that i like and then there's parts that i don't like um i can get behind the whole like if you see where we're at and how we make simulations and stuff like that mm -hmm. um also, you know, there are people that have looked into or are currently looking into, like, ways to upload our consciousness and stuff, connect our, ourselves to computers. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, that whole part of it, I'm fine with. Um, you know, but then there's other things that are kind of, you know, I don't know. It's it's not something that I think we're going to prove anytime soon. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it'll ever really get proven, to be honest. Um, but there are some, you know, like you sent out a list of, like, you know, things that pe point to, like, simulation theory. And, like, one of them's like, the Mandela effect. We're going to get into that. We're going to get right. into that. So, 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 I know so that. that. But, like, there's a few things on that list that I think are, uh, like, people are reaching real hard for. Um, yeah. yeah, for sure. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's fun. I think it's a, you know, no one really knows why we got put here or how we got here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that, like, as people, we tend to want, like, it seems to be one of the most common human traits is wanting to know why we're here or where we came from. So, like, different theories spout, right? Like, obviously, that's where religion comes from, right? The need to explain the world around us. And yeah. religion covers the part of the world that we can't explain a lot of times. Um simulation theory is also along those lines right it's like oh this happened we don't know why it happened or like this happens you know like maybe we're in a simulation we don't really have control over it right yeah. or someone else is controlling it um you know it's just i like it for the thought experiment <laughs> and the like more than anything and it's yeah. fun to like mess with sean and stuff like that when he participates so yeah yeah i, um, hear, it. I yeah. hear it one i mean we probably I, I think i think i'm gonna save some of my comments um till a little bit later so the idea that i explained um kind of the popular right now at least the in vogue explanation of simulation theory um that you know, 
we're capable of creating this virtual world. If we can create this virtual world, then we're very likely bots because it's just it's just a numbers game. Right. Uh, that was popularized. Um, I'm not sure if it's an original idea of his. Um, I know there's, I mean, there, there's a lot of different kind of things that, that dabble in, um, in the simulation theory. Um, I mean, this book that he wrote was after the matrix. I don't know if he, if he, um, if he contributed to it or, or what, but anyway, his name is Nick Bostrom and the book is called, are you living in a computer simulation? It came out in, in 2003, he's been on Joe Rogan and a, a bunch of other podcasts and stuff explaining his theory. Um, here's a funny part um, that you know might be evidence that I'm being trolled by a simulation. His his argument, the the, the simulation argument he postul postulizes or whatever is is a uh, is a trilemma. So not a dilemma where there's two things. It's a three parter. No need to point out to you guys why that kind of creeped me out when I first read it. Um, so this is maybe some. This might take some some high 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 thought here. The concepts are a little. I mean, it's not how I usually speak, but basically his simulation argument uh, has three elements. The first element is the number of organisms capable of creating these virtual these simulations is very close to zero so in our entire universe you know we have us and then we have all the animals the creatures that we live with um other planets maybe do they have intelligent life maybe they just have creatures um you know uh like bacteria and that sort of thing whatever life forms exist on all these other planets not that many of them are going to have the capabilities that we do if we are capable of um creating this this type of simulation um maybe we're not but maybe other beings are either way there's you know millions and billions and trillions probably of these life forms theoretically out in the out in the universe the number that are able to create this type of thing i mean just based on our own planet is, is very close to zero you know one we are the one hypothetically um, you know, maybe maybe fucking squid can do it. Maybe uh, maybe orcas can do it. Um, maybe they maybe they'll evolve someday. I don't fucking know. But either way, it's very close to zero, right? I think you guys can understand that. Uh, the second element is the number of post-human civilizations. So the number of these simulated civilizations um, that desire to to create simulations. Uh, is close to zero. So, if if a um, if if we are capable, or if there are other beings that have our capabilities, maybe they're just not interested in creating simulations for whatever reason. Um, but there will be, you know, there will be a percentage that um, that will want to, but the majority won't for for whatever reason. Again, these are kind of hypothetical high concept uh theories the third element is the fraction of all beings with our type of experiences that are living in a simulation is very close to one so that's where it gets a little confusing for me but basically um it it just comes back to everybody's bots right that there's there's an infinite number of bots hypothetically the actual number of real beings is uh, is very small so that fraction of bots over actual beings is close to one so yeah uh that is some physics theory for you so i'm not sure if that clears it up but i just wanted to spell out his actual simulation argument are you ready for the fun part, Jeff? Always. This is where it's going to get a little spooky. Um, if you have children around, cover their ears, maybe. Um, because some of this stuff, um, it, it's just spooky. It's just spooky. I feel like I'm in an M. Night Shyamalan 
movie um and that some of this was the twist so best evidence we are living in a simulation get those tinfoil hats ready um so one of the i mean this is just kind of a side note anecdote there's very little information out there about um this type of thing if you well i mean i'm just googling and uh on youtube evidence we're living in a simulation there's not that much i mean you would think for how how popularized it'd be it'd be a long list this is not a long list you go to you go to reddit and look for simulation stuff like the highest post has like 20 responses that's it on google or when i did a google search i could only find like one article which this is mostly based off of. it's an article by the vulture um, magazine it came out a few years ago it's called 15 if, like 15 15 pieces of evidence that we're living in a simulation i parsed out some of the ones that weren't interesting to me so i think we have a list of 11 here but yeah man just the fact that you can't really find that much for how popular it is it's kind of spooky right do you think that's kind of spooky i think it's kind of spooky um as someone who enjoys the conspiracy world i don't find it all that spooky because there's a few things that get huge like audiences and then everything else is just kind of like little stuff here and there and there's not that many people that are really like there's plenty of people that like with simulation theory i have a feeling there's plenty of people that enjoy it and enjoy talking about it but there's very few people that actually like think about it or dive into it the way like the guy you brought up uh bostrom brostrom or whatever um and so like it's probably one of those things that, like, it's probably talked about more than someone actually, like, researches or thinks about it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, here we are trying to spread knowledge, you know. Maybe maybe we'll be, like, a vital um, vital component of this. Maybe we'll make, make the simulation theory Wikipedia page or something. I think uh, it already has one, but we might get on the bottom as a footnote. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We need to be yeah. sourced, though, at least. All right. So here we go evidence and this is like quote unquote scientific or whatever um, right so you mentioned it number one the mandela effect so there are people that have vivid memories of watching um tv coverage of nelson mandela's death in the 1980s he died in 2013 so people get confused because they think they, for whatever reason, they have memories of him dying on, on TV or, or, or coverage of his death. They but, probably saw some black dude die on TV in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, but that's, that's, that's a popular one. Um, there's, there's, there's a few other examples of, quote unquote, right. the... Um, the Mandela effect. This one kind of freaked me out because I feel like I, well, two of these did. Um, but the, everybody knows, well, maybe not everybody, but um, there's the children's book, the, the Berenstein Bears are remembered as the Berenstein Bears. So the bear, they're called the Berenstein Bears officially. If you look it up, that's what they're called. But, um, People have memories of it being called the Berenstein Bears, which is actually how I remember it. So maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just like a common typo, whatever reason, your brain, I, it's a common misspelling or something. I um, think this one has to go with uh, normal last names and this name being very similar to a last name that you see. Yeah. Uh, there are plenty of people in this world with the last name Stein, S-T-E-I-N. And I don't know, and I've never heard of anyone having the last name S-T-A-I-N. Stein? <laughs> yes. And I would imagine that this is just people's experiences yeah. of seeing Stein and that taking over. Because when you never see Stein as a last name or as a name in general, why would you think that you know, this fictional character family or whatever, you know, that that's my thought on that one personally. Yeah. yeah. 
I hear you. Um, so, still, somewhat spooky. Because right. my brain does remember it as Baron well, Steen. There. And there's also, this is more than just a couple people, right? This is like yes. a lot of people in the world. Yes. So, yeah. Okay, next one. Also fucking spooky to me. Uh, is memories of a non-existent movie from the 1990s uh, called Shazam, featuring Sinbad as a genie. I feel like, and he grants wishes to some kid. So, basically Kazam, but Shazam with Sinbad. And I do feel like I remember seeing ads for this. I feel like I can picture Sinbad in the genie gear, the genie garb, um, and basically it's Kazam, but Shazam. So the theory basically is that, um, you know, there was an update or something. There was a revision um, at, at some point, for whatever reason, they switched from the movie called the, the, the Simulation Overlords, Sean, switched, um, switched um, Shazam featuring Sinbad to Kazam featuring Shaquille O'Neal. Kind of spooky because, like I said, I feel like I have that memory embedded somewhere in there. Maybe he was just in an ad that looked familiar. Maybe it was a spoof on Mad TV or something. I don't know. He hasn't come out and said anything. And the other thing is, I had a thought a few years ago what the fuck happened to Sinbad? He's just like, he's alive. Oh. yeah, I mean, he's alive, but he's not in the, in the public anymore. I haven't seen him, you know, since the first Clinton administration. It's weird. <sighs> okay. Um, so, yeah, basically, people, because of the Mandela effect, um, they believe there's being edits. There, there's edits that's being changed. However, it, 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 they're fucking with our memories, basically, on what, on what happened. Um, so that's, that's number one, evidence that we're living in a simulation. Number two, um, there's actually a, a, there's a, there's a name for this one. I wish I would have looked it up, but um, missing aliens. Where is everybody, right? Um, you know, why have we not been visited? Why have we not really seen strong evidence of aliens if we believe that, um, you know, the universe is infinite? And, um, you know, we don't know if we're the first of the game because there is, an there is an organism out there somewhere that was the first intelligent life. But, again, very low probability that it's us. And, whew, God, I fucking hope. <laughs> I hope we're not the first. But, in theory, you would think that, I mean, they're traveling through wormholes or whatever, they'd be visiting us, and we'd have strong evidence. You know, maybe we're just not there yet, um, worthy of being visited. Um, you know, maybe the orbs that Navy fighter pilots are chasing off the coast of Ensenada are aliens. You know, maybe it's just some bullshit natural phenomenon. Who knows? But either way, there's no there's no compelling evidence that we have been visited or witnessed a evidence of aliens, really. Um, and that's that's just kind of odd um, for how we understand our our universe bit of a stretch um i'm not sure if that's evidence that we live in a simulation but uh it was cited in that article and it is it is kind of weird yeah i mean i think i think the aliens one is for me like less of a simulation theory issue and more of a just like alien issue um yeah. but i think it's a i'm a firm believer in aliens but because I just think, like, mentally, like, with how big the universe is, to think that we're the only, like, sentient beings is kind of, like, it's very narcissistic. And I just don't think that we are. Um, yeah. But also with how big the universe is, it would not surprise me if, you know, in every star that you know like we have the sun that's our star and we have what eight or nine planets around it depending on when you grew up mm -hmm. and as far as we know there's only one planet that has 
sentient life on it, right? Or life at all, which is Earth, right? Yeah. Um, what if it's the same around every star, right? And just not that, like, you know, stars are so spread out in our universe that, you know, what if aliens are on the complete opposite end of the universe and yeah. maybe they can travel in space, but they don't know how to get over to us yet, right? Yeah. Or something like that. There's yeah. just so many different possibilities with it that, like, it's hard for me to include aliens in this. As yeah. like, so. I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, from, from our understanding, like, what is it? Einstein's theory of relativity. relativity. Yeah. Um, you know, nothing can fast, travel faster than light. Um, so, you know, like, like you said, we're just far as fuck away from everything. Um, right. So how are you going to send something? Um, I mean, you can point like a radio signal, right, or something, and maybe you can pick it up. But how are we yeah. going to understand it? We don't, we don't speak alien. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and I mean, you know, their Ros- Rosetta Stone version is it may be different than ours. So, um, okay, uh, this one, this one is is maybe I think the best, the best piece of evidence that that we might be living in a, in a simulation number that's why i made it number three um so it's it's the um electron double double slit experiment i don't understand all the components of this but basically they get a um it, it's some sort of experiment that they do to observe the behavior of electrons and they um, they have like a, a a piece of copper or something with two slits in it, and they fire electrons at it, and then they just measure the behavior of um, of the electrons. I don't know why the fuck they do this, but the results from those experiments are that the electrons behave differently if somebody is observing the experiment than if they're not and that's consistent that the results from just just vary based on the observer so if it's being observed or not so the the thought is here that um basically to save computing power that um that electrons aren't aren't rendered unless they're unless they're being observed so it's it's kind of it's kind of spooky it's like evidence that um you know of of um you know maybe not not necessarily faulty programming but a a programming design to to save to save energy is the is the idea so does that spooky at all um no because i don't know enough about it to be honest but this is also in the quantum mechanics field yeah um if you know how, so I don't understand this experiment, so I'm not going to really talk about it at all. But if you know how a computer works, and it works off ones and zeros, right? It's either on or off in a lot of ways, right? Um, quantum computing works off three states, right? There's like an on state, an off state, and an on-off state, right? Right? where something can essentially be on and off at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, This strikes me as something very similar uh, or along the same lines. So I don't, like I said, I don't know enough about it. Yeah. Um, But it doesn't seem completely new to me mentally. Um, But it is something I'll probably look into a little bit more. Yeah. So I thought that one was 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 very interesting and um i mean it just it just opens opens things up that like part of the world isn't even being rendered unless there are observers i guess it's like if the you know it's the old um riddle if if a if a tree falls in in the woods and nobody's around to hear it doesn't make a sound right right is australia being rendered right now um, you know, or do we just get um, like video of, of it since since we're not there observing it? 
you know, since we're not there, they're just being simmed right now. Yeah. 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 So again, that one's interesting. Some of these are, um, so, okay. So we'll just go to number four. Um, so there's been a, uh, evidence that, um, that DNA, certain strands of DNA, um, contain a computer virus code. I don't exactly know how they would see that, but the University of Washington success. Okay, no, so okay, this is actually scientists put a a, vi- a computer virus in a strand of DNA. So the University University of Washington successfully embedded a computer virus into a physical DNA strand. Um, so some see this as evidence that, um, that our, that our biological reality is, is just, is just computer coding. Um, and yeah. the, the reason why they did that is because of like biotech or something. They think certain things of biotech are, are vulnerable to, to bugs somehow by the, them being able to do that. Um, Interesting. Yeah, it's just interesting that some like programming can be materialized into into matter, basically, and you know DNA, which is like our fundamental component of of us being, you know, who we are. Right. Um, okay, so this is just like the convenient timing um, evidence. Uh, like climate change, we, we're happening to exist when our planet is going through this. Um, we're we're at like a turning point, right? We're 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 well. If everything with us that the scientists say is to be believed, um, we have we're about to pass the the point of no return as far as climate change goes. You know, either we permanently damage the planet, or we can or we can fix it. And the fact that we exist in that period in time is is kind of weird however um you know i feel like i feel like every during every era the people existing were probably like oh like it's it's crazy like what a time to be alive you know we just learned how to throw rocks like <laughs> like right. imagine living generations isn't that weird like we, we can we can throw rocks now it's like oh we have um you know, Christianity starting, like, what a time to be alive, you know what I mean? Like, all that before, now we're so woke, right? Right. Um, the Industrial Revolution, the Renaissance, like, all of that. People must have thought that they were special because, you know, and now we basically think that way because of uh, climate change, like, iPhones, technology, social media, like, all of that. We think we're in this special time, but it's everybody's thought that throughout their generations because there's always new shit. So they right. think that their new shit is the, um, you know, they can't imagine it. They can't think of it past or too much past the, um, what they're currently having. So that is the convenient timing, um, element, which is kind of interesting, but, um, I just think, you know, I just think it's a, it's a symptom of our, existence it's, it's a product of our existence um number six i'm not really going to get into it but basically it's nick brostrom's theory it's just a numbers game right if you can have a right. million bots the likelihood that we are in a simulation it's just probable and but i would just want to point out like elon musk believes in this um elon also doesn't has like admittedly talked about like not like Elon's one to like think about simulation theory and think about AI, but he's openly talked about not caring a whole lot because he has <laughs> no control over it. Yeah, I hear you. Um, so, so the 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 seventh element is just all the weird news that kind of defies logic, right? Trump is president, Brexit, the the mix up of the envelopes at the at the Oscars where. Um, I know Moonlight actually won, but who was it given to? I can't remember. Wasn't it La La Land La La. or something like that? Yeah, La La Land. I actually just saw this clip. That's the other weird thing is, like, as I was doing some of this stuff, I was, like, observing shit, but maybe it's just because it was in my mind. I was looking out for yeah. it. But 
it's still spooky. <laughs> um, Falcons, Super Bowl disaster. They were up 28-3. to three. They lost uh, my 2019 fantasy football team and the third place trolling nonstop. You know, more evidence of this weird news. Um, basically, someone's trolling us, right? Some, somebody's controlling it and just, like, punching the keys and they're like, ha-ha, fuck this. Like, watch, they're going to go wild. Um, you know, um, so, so yeah, kind of interesting. Another thing that um, I recently saw was it was this Twitter thing. Uh, it was just a tweet. Like, somebody said, um, have you ever noticed, like, your neighbors never get groceries? And I was like, fuck, I've never seen, like, my neighbors bringing in groceries. Like, that's fucking weird. And then this week, after I had that thought, I've seen neighbors, like, two or three different times bringing in groceries. Like, am I right. looking out for it? Is my memory just not, like capturing that and storing it in the long term and now i'm looking out for it either way kind of weird kind of weird um okay number eight um a well-respected theoretical physicist james gates claims he has identified actual computer code embedded in strings uh or embedded in equations of string theory uh resembling error correcting codes so this one's way 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 over my head quantum physics but um, he's observed computer code in the equations of string theory and that they are error correct, like self-correcting stuff. So basically they prevent glitches. Right. Um, number nine. This one's, again, it's kind of similar to, um, you know, it's just, just how we perceive things. Um, but Earth's location in the Goldilocks zone, right? Earth is... Um, right in the in the in the sweet spot of sustaining life right at least as we know it um so it's called the goldilocks zone but again maybe we just think that's special because us and it's just i don't know it's just a, a phenomenon that that we think that means something when it just like it's just a, a product you know uh, of, of 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 our existence so it, right it's, i it's, i'm I actually like this as like a, a proponent for simulation theory because if you were designing a simulation, you would want, and you wanted it to run for so long, you would put the population of that simulation into a place where they could thrive, right? Yeah. So this one does make sense to me. Like, why would you put humans on mars right if you were designing humans the way we're designed like mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense you know what i mean but throwing us on earth you know or designing a planet for us makes a lot yeah. of sense yeah or maybe we're just a product of of that actual planet being in in the right spot so it's right it is it is interesting i i agree i just i just um i i i just think it's more of we think it's special because that's where we are. Right. Okay. Um, so this one's really interesting too. So weird visual phenomena, like stores disappearing, weird city construction. I mean, there's stuff on like, I think it's on the Chive where it says like evidence we're living in a simulation and it's just all these weird construction things like stairs leading to nowhere. Yeah. Um, I saw one where it was, uh, it was like a, um, almost like a bus stop bench or a park bench and it was along the sidewalk there was one and then right behind it there was another one like exactly the same with the same wear and shit yeah. it's like hey, like did they build these both at the same time why the hell would they build them both at the same time why is right. there you know was the one in the back first and they built the one in the front it just it just doesn't make sense um but the, but there's all kinds of all kinds of stuff like that like ghosts you right. know something claim to see ghosts i've never seen a, a ghost um but but yeah just weird weird shit like that um that that you see and i mean i i have the i have the thought where you know like this feels different like why is this why does this area feel different did they, they cut down a tree like i get that all the time and you can't really yeah. describe it but some people just see that as evidence that the world's being changed around it maybe our memories being um being changed Right. Um, I speed this up here. Um, the last one. This one's also weird too. Is the the blue dress versus the white dress photo? 
and uh, Yanni, Yanni Laurel. Do, does anybody remember that? The uh, the audio glitch? Yanni, A little bit. Yanni, Yanni. And then some people say they hear Laurel. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's just kind of weird. Because, um, I mean, that is a fucking white dress. Uh, anybody who says otherwise is, is crazy. But, but, yeah, they think that that's like some, um, you know, just, just evidence that um like inconsistencies in programming or, or or whatever but um you know but maybe it's just more evidence that we don't fully understand our biology right <sighs> okay so that is the scientific evidence now i want to get into to our evidence stuff that wasn't on the list um i can't believe it wasn't on the list deja vu i get deja vu all the time do you get deja vu not all the time, but I do. Yeah, I remember getting it from being very young. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, I, it happens a few times, a few times a year. Um, and there'll be times when I get it like, like I'll be getting it a few times a month. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, and apparently what I heard the explanation of deja vu is just our brain um, kind of processing things a little slowly than when it's actually happening. So that's why you experience you feel like you've experienced it before it's just because you're you're like your your state of mind is catching up to what your brain's already interpreted so right. it's like it's like seeing it twice but i swear to god when that happens it's from like months or weeks or years like in a dream people say it's people say they've um you know they've seen it in a dream the sensation that i get is not necessarily it's from a dream but i've like lived it before if, yeah if that makes any sense yeah, so. I've kind of had it both ways, like where I feel like I've been in that situation before, right? Yeah. Like that exact situation. Um, I've also had it where it feels like a dream, where it's like, wait, I dreamed about this recently, like this exact thing. You know what I mean? Um, so like I kind of get both of those. Um, like I said, it doesn't happen often for me, but occasionally like it will. And it just kind of like is random, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but that one that one spooked me. I mean, my kind of idea is, um, is yeah, would be that we've we've lived through this before, and for whatever reason, we're we're reliving it again. You know, maybe yeah. maybe our maybe our real organisms are like sitting in a vat somewhere, and um, we're just trying to optimize our life by going through these simulations. And seeing right. what trail we go to to make the decision on what's what's the best for us in life, and the best way to do that is to simulate it over and over and over and over and over again. And maybe they're running at the same time. Maybe there's some like some um, connection between the two worlds to, to kind of optimize, you know, the the the, uh, right. the trails. But deja vu would be a phenomenon in that programming that makes the bots us um, right. be able to sense it in the deja vu is a glitch okay my my second evidence is just uh san diego teams being perennial disappointments you know maybe i'm the you know i'm the bot in this situation and everything in this world is just to troll me and uh you know san diego sports teams being terrible is just like somebody being like ha fucker like let's fuck with this bot <laughs> <laughs> um Another kind of weird example is Dream Sync. I don't know if you ever had this, but there was a time with my where I was still living at home. I was a kid. I had this dream that I was at school, and these little tiny UFOs were chasing me around, um, like the size of a frisbee, but they were like a half, they were like a, a half moon shape or like a almost like a crescent, and they were chasing me around. I was like sliding down the hallways and shit trying to escape them. I went out and told my stepmom that I had that dream and um, I like didn't really talk to her that much. And it was just kind of weird for me to mention it. And yeah. she's like, I had the same, I had the same dream. She's like, I had the same dream last night. There were these little, little spaceships. And she started explaining it to me. I was like, Holy fuck. Like that's exactly what I saw. So weird, but yeah, you know, maybe it's something in the environment. We're living close together. Um, you know, maybe our dreams are just influenced by the environment around us. We, we would have had similar experiences because, you know, we live in the same house. So right. it, it, 
could just be a coincidence, but it was fucking spooky. Yeah, I never had that dream. Number four is just like life in general. Um, you know, if it's to be believed that, you know, sperm gets the egg and pregnates them and then becomes an organism, the the likelihood of us being here is like it's very fucking small in the first place, and that blows my mind. Right. Um so so just just the fact that we're here because of that, you know, like how did how did I just not land in, you know, in a uh, I, I could get inappropriate, but I'm not going to. But you know what I mean? It's just not exist because like you were the little sperming guy swimming or I guess you would be the egg. And anyway, you know, how, how come we just didn't land in a, in a cotex and instead we're we're um, here? It's, it's weird. It's weird. Um, so uh, this was another piece that isn't really applicable today but the absence of chaos in our world when i first started thinking about this um this show is just like everything was going okay for the most part there wasn't any like widespread disease wars or anything like that things were pretty peaceful and normal but um and i thought that was weird like there sh i feel like there should be more chaos in the world if if there's like just just the number of people around like why isn't shit just crazier um but again maybe it's just our biological components where we want some sense of order and we have all these place put all this shit in place to, to prevent that from happening so i just thought it was weird um you know anytime mason gets a kill on a hot drop it just blows my mind so yeah evidence that he's bought um sean sean's good a good piece of evidence that we might be living in a simulation like where is he like where is he since all this shit's been happening since well, he, knew he this is going to the bunker so he could control things yeah exactly um i don't know if i mean we've all done this but we're on autopilot right we're driving we're in our thoughts how the fuck did i get here like <laughs> you know what i mean or like you look at oh, the yeah. you look at the calendar all of a sudden it's like june 24th or whatever um I mean, although this year, bad example because this year's taken forever. Um, but, <laughs> you know, just, just autopilot, stuff like that. Um, repetitive behavior is weird to me because, I mean, I'll make the same joke a lot or I'll, especially in the Mixer chat, like, you know, that's why I try to call it out when somebody, like, says something. You know, like, you said this months before or you yeah. made that same joke or something like that. And to me that, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Our brains are just, you know, static in our, well, they're not static, but, you know, it's us. Our brain is going to, like, fire those same ideas and go down those same neurological pathways. But um, I don't know. To me, that's that's just kind of weird is that repetitive behavior, doing the same thing over and over again in different situations, going to the same jokes. It just, to me, could be evidence that we're a computer program and we're just following this, the uh, the process process map, you know? Yeah. Um, and then desync memory is not matching up. Uh, you know, I tell I tell my wife something. She's like, "No, you didn't say that." And it's like, mm, "Yes, I did." Telling your boss, you know, over and over and over again. Um, but that could just be poor communication, um, or it could be faulty faulty programming. You know, not picking up. Yeah, I think so, that one is interesting because everyone's going to take it a little bit differently right but i'm with you on that so that is our evidence that is our show i gotta go clock in a minute um have fun with that yeah i want to do something real fast though this is our last show this finale went a little longer i told myself if i win, ever won a championship on here i would celebrate so i'm done waiting for me to win a championship to do this Okay. So, this is for you, wine mixer. Um, it's been a long run. We've done like 50 shoes or 50 shows about. Jeff, you've been there for, for more than half of them. I appreciate it, man. This is. I, I mean, I'm glad you've had me. This is cheers to the mixer. It's five o'clock somewhere. Jeff, I love you, buddy. Love you Thanks too. For being here. Thanks for all the listeners. Um, 
being with this ride, you know, it's uh, it's going to be exciting moving forward. Um, let's do this, guys. Like, subscribe, do all that. Um, yeah, man, I'm just going to do it. Here we go. Out of the shoe? Oh, man. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Are those your racing driving shoes? Yeah, man, I won them in a, in a fantasy tournament, as a matter of fact. Nice. All right, guys. Uh, we'll catch you later. Thanks. Thanks for watching. See ya. Later, See Jeff. Ya.